Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about a single world, word, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if you only had one word to describe the most popular programming languages, what would you say? Sweet spot. That's going to be my word. The reason why I pick sweet spot is because I believe that what makes a programming language the most popular is when it is the perfect combination of the things that you need to get the stuff that you need to get done, done. And it is the main factor that determines whether or not something is going to become a success or not. Now that sounds very advanced, but basically what I'm saying is that if you are on the extreme of anything, such as in languages like Haskell or Scala or something like that, where you're trying to do something that is either very niched or very empowering or very academic or you're trying to solve a lot of problems, a lot of uh, things like that, you're setting yourself up for never getting anywhere practically in terms of like high like uh, in terms of popularity and so forth because uh, it's sort of like in my opinion it's very similar to product development if you want to sell a, pr a good product you can you have to figure out what your focus group uh, who is your target group like who is your target consumer and cater and tailor your product towards those consumers now if you don't have a good customer base, you're not. Doesn't matter how many features your product has. Nobody's going to buy it. I like to say that uh, the reason why nobody has ever tried to make a toaster into a multimedia tool is because it's a really shitty idea. Most people just want a toaster. They don't want a toaster that also has uh, uh, Bluetooth and uh, makes cookies. And if you, you open it up, there's a small Swiss Army knife kit that comes with it. Like all of these things are novelty type of things. Why the reason why people buy a standard toaster usually is because they just need to heat up the bread. That's what they need. The same thing goes for programming languages. And I think that languages such as, say, Golang is a very good example of this, I think. Or Python is also, I think, an extremely good example of this approach where you get opinionated, like the language is opinionated all about how to do the sort of work that it is designed to help you do we enforce or we remove all like because that, like if you go to the other extreme of that that's going to be Scala like Scala has all of these choices like there's so much you can do with that language like it's I will go as far as to say that I don't think that I know of a more powerful language in terms of language features than Scala I can't really think of any any language that is more powerful but at the same time that is a downside because now there's so much that if you want to master the thing and they're like uh, and f you know it's going to be a shit show to get the communities to settle on good practices because there's so many people who have different requirements on their code bases so the diversity is like just enormous and the fragmentations of code like there's so many problems that can come from that but uh, i mean on the other hand you don't also you, at the same time you don't want to be too restrictive because if you're too restrictive, then people can't use your language because your language doesn't actually fulfill all the needs that they have to do the work that they want to do. And that, uh, and if you look at languages, let's take Go as an example. Like Go is very popular because it's small and it's enforced in a very with good practices and it's very well designed to do the sort of service-oriented web work that most of us are doing. So it, of course, it's I mean, and it's backed up by Google and the branding is of course a thing as well. But it is a it's a well-designed language and that makes it enormously popular it becomes really popular because of this exact thing but at the same time then you have the other group of people who go well yeah go go is or python it doesn't really matter any language that has this design in mind where you try to restrict just boil things down to the bare necessities they kind of go well yeah but it's is the is the ecosystem mature enough and then you have languages such as say java or c sharp where they also 
are trying to go for the sweet spot. But they're not going for the same sort of sweet spot. Go might grow into, I mean, I mean who knows, Go might become the new Java. Who do, I don't know. But uh, uh, Java or and C Sharp, they're going for the sweet spot in the enterprise environment. And here you have more diversity. So here you have more packages and more use cases and so forth. But at the same time, they're not as quote unquote crazy as the Sc uh, Scala where, where they go even further. Like there they go even beyond what is like in an enterprise environment feasible and viable. There they go even to the academic level. And if you're at the academic level in terms of features and diversity, you're creating a language that is uh, that is basically trying to do everything. And you have to ask yourself, is that a, is that a good thing? Well, if you look at the adoption rate of C Sharp and Java, I'm not saying that this is like this is this is by no means like you. I mean, if Scala had been the first thing that came along, I'm pretty sure that it would have been. Uh, um, I mean, Java wouldn't even have existed. I'm pretty sure. But uh, let's just try to go with my train of thought. Well, now that we have these solutions like Java and C Sharp that kind of is designed to solve the enterprise problem, and then you have Scala that can do even more. What, what is the motivation to do even more unless you have that need? And that is, I mean, uh, th and I really believe that that is the main, the main red thread between the main, like the most popular programming languages. They find a way of identifying their target audience, and of course that audience has to usually be web-oriented or be people that are in the web space. Rust is a very big outlier in the modern days, but uh, I, I'll treat Rust as a bit of a special case because there's more going on there than just the standard stuff. Uh, but, but at the very least, they all have this thing in common where they try to figure out, okay, what is our target audience? What things do we need to give this target audience? We don't have to be the best at everything or, or and we can't just focus on being the best at one thing because if we're just doing the one thing well then we have C sharp and uh, oh, sorry we have C and we have C++ and you have people in that space as well who go well we can build absolutely everything yes you can but you have to work a lot harder for it than the people who have the higher level languages and it just isn't it's not in the sweet spot of the thing that you want to do being able to do something with the language is not the same thing as having the language make that thing easy for you. So what I want you to take away from this is that I believe that the trend, the, the red thread, uh, or the one word that describes all the popular programming languages is sweet spot. They try to find the right amount of features for the thing that they're trying to do and then they position the language and they try to solve the sort of problems that are very popular problems to solve. Usually they are web related, not always, but in many cases. And this is usually the sort of thing with a lot of other complexities, of course, and that's why, I mean, it's very limiting to just say that it's one word and one concept because there's not just one thing that determines everything, but this is a major factor. And then, of course, things like lobbying and ha positioning yourself in the times and so forth and then of propositions and so forth and then the growth of the language all of these sorts of things factor in community is also a big thing uh, when you look at the popular languages but they all seem to be able to find that perfect level well perfect is a strong word but they try to find that sweet spot this is what we need to provide no more no less to make the per the people that we're trying to get this language in the hands of to feel like yeah, I have everything I need now. I feel very comfortable doing this. I'm going to invest in this. This seems to be a good investment for me, and uh, it, feel, it, it feels easy to work with, and I feel fairly productive with it. That's what you're going for, the sweet spot. Have a great day.